Right then, we must start recording again. Now, first of all, to get this room like it is, we have various lights on. Let me show you one over there. Look, see that? That is all part of a kind of film studio that I have in this room. I've still got those curtains to drive myself crazy and drive you crazy. I can't be bothered changing them. Changing that background, I just leave it, you know. I've just been tidying it up and moving things around. Now, what it is, I've got a big light up there light there and a light behind there so it's well lit back lighting side lighting front lighting light all that is all part of doing videos just read it on the internet how to make videos lighting it tells you so you've got that then of course never was ever ever never a rock star who didn't have shades they all have shades i don't know what it is they just love to pose you know i don't love to pose i like to do the songs i love to do the music when the time is right you know and i haven't really got anything coming on at the moment. What I'm doing is encouraging my friend Martin and he's going to be coming tomorrow or Saturday tomorrow. Today's Friday and I'm sort of encouraging him to do musical productions whatever it may take. He loves drums and rhythm and he's good on those bongos there. Boom, 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 boom. So tomorrow we might start off with a drum from a drum machine that I've got over there. And I think he'll love that because once he hears the drum, he loves to play along with it, you see, he loves the beat. He's a beatnik, really. So, um, I gave him the drum kit. I've got, I had a drum kit upstairs, a maroon one called Boston is like name of the drum kit manufacturers or Tama or somebody makes it and gives it another trade name so it's in Boston but it was upstairs it was kind of in the way and I wasn't using it so and I thought also that it's sort of coming up to Christmas I mean it's only October the what 23rd or 4th or something oh I don't know I've got somebody on um Skype, so oh, it's I mean, Skype's crazy, it tells you somebody's there, it tells you somebody's there, and then when you look, they're not there at all. You know, it says online, but all right, they're online. What are you telling me they're online for? Unless they're trying to contact me, you know, it's, it's a bit crazy. Skype. I think my glasses now. I seem to be putting my glasses on the last few days. Oh, this is an old one. I seem to be putting these glasses on. I seem to, seem to be needing my glasses. Now it's got something on Facebook from Michelle. She had a link. Michelle, just a dream featuring John Diamond. So I give her a, a speak out, or whatever they call it in America, don't they? Shout, a shout out. I'll give you a shout out. A shout out. <laughs> I've heard it, but let's just say Michelle has made this, she's made this great de uh, track, you know, her and this guy. She's from Romania. It's a great techno song, and she's done the singing. I think he's done like the keyboards and everything else. And he's got this quite elaborate setup you know loads of equipment uh 
and then they made a video and it's good you know Michelle Michelle something probably Mika I think she came second in some top hundred on the internet but I don't tend to pay any attention to the top hundreds because I'm not really interested in what people think you know their approval of my music because to be honest with you I can't really make anything amazing as amazing as I like to make things you kind of need even more equipment I ain't got the money you kind of need like a, a Roland keyboard you know you need like special equipment uh, high quality so more expensive equipment and uh, I ain't got the money so melt as I say shoot now the thing is I was thinking why I was going to make this video and I'll tell you why you make them you make them to make sure the equipment's working and sometimes it can be a song sometimes it's a chat you know chat so this one's just a chat you know this is just uh, talking about life in general Uh, so um, what I've just been doing is shifting loads of stuff that was behind me which is like, like equipment you know example yeah like I've got a few of these things like to read small print and contracts that's me Things like this, this little uh, keyboard, it's a little uh, synthesizer actually, and if you use an amp, it will make a huge noise, you know, it will make a huge production of these things. That, yeah. See what I mean? I'm sure you recognise this from like techno music, you know? You know, it's loads of techno tracks They're made like this. And what they're doing, they use a small thing like this. You get a cable and you put it into your 8 track. They've got an 8 track down there. Or into a recording studio and get bigger. So, just a bit. I'm sure everybody recognise that recognises that kind of sound. They use it in techno, so they're using Moog synthesizer. The principles or they are they are actually using a Moog synthesizer or a synthesizer of some kind. And usually they have these little knobs on and you just turn them and it starts to make this noise. Everybody knows it was listening to techno, it's kind of and it can be very powerful and you can really enjoy it, you know. Um, I'll put it down there because I've got another one there and I've got another one up there or somewhere. Now I've got like loads of equipment everywhere, you know. But that's really ready for tomorrow because when Martin comes tomorrow, if he comes, but when he comes tomorrow, I'll have some little toys for him, you know, these little things that you can use.
But you just hate it when the computer goes into that save mode and it goes all black. Now this, I'm going to play a little tune and I'm going to tell you something that should kind of make you laugh, but it's not really that funny, but it'll make you laugh. Listen to this. What that is, that sound of that kind of just going up a note or a tone, a bit like bending a string on a guitar. That sound is what France 3 put into their videos, into their, when they make productions. So France 3 is France 3. And it's the television station from the south of France, from Nice, Port de Vimo, I think. Uh, probably from where Thierry comes from, uh, Martigue, Marseille, Saint-Chamas. And they put that noise in everywhere. <laughs> Listen to it again. It's almost like a way of copywriting the videos so as nobody else can kind of record them or something. So when you're watching anything with France 3, the news, the weather, uh, sports matches, what they do is they actually remix the no that sound through their recording desk into the programme because it drives you fucking crazy. Because I had France 3 on this computer. What I did, I just bought this software, cost me about £30 or something. It wasn't too expensive. And it had television from all over the world. When I opened it up and got it going, it had television from Japan, everywhere. It was brilliant. I've never seen anything so amazing. Um, the English part of it was a bit crap. It wasn't much, just like a couple of repeats of a bit of. Sky News, so that was a bit of a con, you know. But you could get France 3 and some other French ones, and you could get like all the programmes. So I was watching sort of like May Grey, I was watching TV shows, cooking shows. One of them they used to go out on the road around the south of France. Showing all these different villages and towns. It was really interesting for ages. And then it kind of just disappeared. It kind of with me either my computer broke and so did the software. And the software just with it because I had to buy some new computers and so you got to buy it again. I bought them twice. So like your computer breaks and you've got this software in it. And if you're not careful, you lose you lose your software that you bought for something else, you know, which is a pain in the ass. So um, so that noise, yeah, that's France three. And I remember because it, after a while, I think it sort of brainwashed me. You know, I was sitting there watching these television programs, and I'm not joking. Every five minutes or something, the backing music is kind of French, like kind of like accordion music or nothing in particular, just kind of like backing music, like to every TV programme. And then every, every five or seven minutes you hear this noise, like that. All the time on this France 3, I used to think, I'm crazy, I don't know, they put like, and it must be their kind of signature tune, it's their kind of brainwashing, you know, the kind of thing that they put in. It's called a subliminal, an audio subliminal. And the idea of it is uh, it might be that you actually like that noise, that uh, uh, 
and so you'd have to come back to this video you'd have to keep coming back and watching this because it was so interesting but it wasn't really what was said it was that noise going eh, eh. I'll play it again I'm not joking and what happens is people might come and watch France 3 without realising it because they actually like that eh, eh. it's just a tone like guitar it's just like one note on a guitar it's a half a note it just goes up down like that listen that's all it is just that but that noise could make you unconsciously on a subliminal subconscious level think oh I'll watch France 3 tonight because you're waiting for that noise to come And the weird thing about it is it goes against every grain of your reasoning and understanding. Because you're watching a programme in French about local authorities sweeping the roads. Or you're watching a programme about, polit you know, about politics, about people who are interviewed in the street with microphones about uh, what they might think about some paint work, painting that's going on uh, near the seaside or something like that. But the trick is in the music, you see. That's, that could be the reason why people they watch France 3 because it's their local regional TV station and they get the music and sound because all this is is sound which is annoying, it's like that fucking plane up there, I'm going past to airport, right? Um, but that is a subliminal, that, that I think that's what, for some reason people think, oh, I've got to watch that video again, or I've got to see that television programme, I've got to watch France 3. Anyway, what they did, it's a nationalised, France 3 was nationalised, and it was made private, no, no, it was sort of nationalised, like made into a public television company in France. Protected from anybody taking it over, I think, with government money. And then I think they privatised it, which meant anybody, so like some American, usually American because they've got loads more money, or Saudi Arabians or somebody, they buy a stake in it, you know, and kind of start influencing it. Or maybe they wouldn't influence it, you know, they might make money from advertising or whatever they're doing. Um, but it was a kind of, like the BBC, it was protected, it was privatised, sorry, nationalised, kind of. You understand what I'm saying, don't you? It was kind of uh, protected by the French government and so protected by the French people through their taxation. So that they've got a station that kind of gives you interesting programs about all kinds of things. It doesn't just turn into kind of like MTV or just loads of, you know, um, films all the time. And some of the films are great. They had James Bond in French, you know, in translation. And all kinds of stuff. It was, it was fucking great. And then what happened was the software failed because the computer failed. And I didn't want to get... It made it a lot of computer fixed uh, with that hard drive in it. And then turn it back on and see if my software is still working. And I'd sort of forgotten about it, you know, so it went it's in the other computer down there, which is sort of bust. And when I say sort of bust, it isn't sort of bust. You could still get life out of it and I could still watch France 3. But then it kept going off, you see. It was going down the internet. But it just wasn't working very well. It worked for about five minutes, then it kind of cut off. So I wasn't happy about it. It kind of wouldn't go to the server and come back properly. So that was France 3. Now, I've no idea why I'm talking about France 3. I was going to talk about other things, about writers and painters and why people make videos and me. I was going to talk about what is about me, what 
Ama. What I kind of really wanted to do. And I've told people what I really kind of really wanted to be was a writer, you know, wrote stories. Um, and I kind of had a go at it, you know, I wrote quite a few short stories just about going down to the shop. So I'd go down to the shop and I'd talk to this Indian guy who's a Sikh with a turban. And we'd talk about something like that. And I'd find something interesting in what he said, or interesting in the walk down there, what was going on in my head, what I was thinking about. Like that I used to go to that same shop when I was a kid on my little bicycle, which was blue and yellow. And it could have been blue and yellow because I liked Leeds rugby. <laughs> I can't remember. Or maybe I can some other day, I might remember. But I used to come home and then I'd type up what it was that was in my head that I found interesting, what aspects of a short story. And so I typed up quite a lot of short stories. And in a sense, it's a bit like writing a song. That's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to just kind of type out your mad thoughts as well as your normal thoughts you know or tell people about what you did when you went shopping or how I was just washing the bathroom out doing a really good cleaning um, because people are interested in everything and they like you can't always do books or anything about uh, film stars or books about exciting things right which is called melodrama, you know, people like to write, so like, oh, spy thriller by Frederick Forsyth, you know, and he'd been a spy, and he did that one where they were going to assassinate President de Gaulle, the, what was it, the Day of Jackal. And maybe that's quite fitting, because really I'm waiting for uh, my friend Tony in Denmark, who's expecting a friend called John Jones to arrive. They've probably gone to the pub, you see. That he's arrived, they've gone to the pub. And they're getting some beer down now. And they'll be, they'll be in pub till 10 o'clock or something. And then they'll come back. And then eventually I'll get onto Skype with them. Well, through Facebook and we'll be talking. Because I want to see John Jones, really. Because I've seen my friend Tony a lot. But John Jones used to go to my polytechnic, you know, Coventry. Coventry Polytechnic, Lanchester Polytechnic, the greatest academic institution in the world. Much better than Oxford, because it, it made intellectuals like me. <laughs> See what I mean? You've got, and you've got to be like that. You've got to be really competitive about what you did, where you studied, who your friends were. All my friends were all fucking drinkers and druggies, you know, that's the truth, we're all fucking boozers, and we weren't really into drugs a lot then, but, you know, yeah, you know, that as well, and then, um, but we were so happy, and years later when I went to Holland, I was talking to this French woman, and she was a translator at Heineken, but she was such a miserable cow, you know, and she had, there had no spark, you know, there was nothing there, you know, and she'd done a degree in Paris, and she was called Marina. And uh, I said to her, why did you stay in Paris when you live in Paris? You know, I, in the back of my mind, oh, she, oh, well, she went there, you know, oh, I was happy going to a local university. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, why didn't you fuck off to, like, Dijon, or go to, fuck, you know, Lyon, or go to Marseille, you know, get away from your parents, and, fucking have a good time, you know, like I did. No, she hadn't. And that explains why she was such a cabbage. She, she was a real fucking cabbage. Thick. Stupid. I think she got a degree in Spanish, so she got a degree and she's, but her dad was Spanish, so it's kind of like, all right, you know, he sort of helped her. She's got that influence. And she used to speak really crap Dutch, you know. Who did her crap? Fucking she couldn't progress. You're too stupid to progress. You know, progression means you have to kind of read around the subject or learn something else. Learn more words. You know, I used to write down 10 words a day when I was in Holland. Try, try to keep learning, you know. Well, she didn't. 
But um, I digress. Uh, it's interesting, anyway, interest is because a friend of mine from Britain, John, who's from Bristol, is gone up to Denmark to see my friend. And I'm kind of quite anxious to, to talk to him on Facebook, you know, see how he is and see his face and see him get to, because what's so funny about him is so, he was behaving himself when he's talked to me in the past a bit on the telephone, but he's kind of a, a sceptical realist, you know, he doesn't really trust anybody or believe anything anybody tells him. <laughs> he's brilliant, that's why, I was telling Tony, that's why I like him, even at the Polytechnic, he used to just sit there with his drink and he used to just think, fuck off, everybody else. You could tell in his face, he just, it's all right, he's enjoying himself and everything, but he, he's got this streak of, um, there's nothing wrong with it because you need scepticism in the modern world and cynicism because people will try and fucking tell you a bamboozled story, you know, a bullshit story, and John he wouldn't have it, you know. He, he just laughs at him, you know, afterwards he'll tell you what somebody was saying to him. And then he just laughs at him, you know. So he's he's a funny guy. And of course he is like a, a building, you know, he's got a degree in building. And uh, he's done big projects, you know, like hospitals and things like that. So he knows what he's doing and he's like a manager and he's had a couple of companies and stuff. Of course he keeps quiet about the companies. I don't want to know about what he did with those. But really, it's not about what he's done. It's it's like trying to be 21 again, you know? Like, it rejuvenates me and my friend Tony that way. Kind of young again. We, we're nearly almost back to being at the Polytechnic. And all we used to do, really, was booze, smoke, chase women, play football now and then. And study. We used to really, you know, we used to really study. We used to study hard, and then you take it easy, and then you get flu, and then you go back home at Christmas, and you go back home uh, for a weekend. John Jones used to lend me his, uh, used to lend me his bedroom when he went back to see his girlfriend, so I could like go to the local pub in Coventry and then doss down in his room. So it was very good, very generous, you know. I think in life, as you get older, you, you, you're not like that. You've become sensible and always looking, you know, to charge somebody some rent money or you know, shit like that. But it's not like that, you know, because he he said, "Look, I'm going away for a weekend. I've even got some tickets here. Look, these are for me meals in the Polytechnic Priory Hall. It was called. You can have me meal tickets. I mean, what a great thing to do because I'm not going to be using them." And I'll only waste them. So it was brilliant. You know, I remember it. You know, he used to, he used to, his tickets a lot because he used to go see his girlfriend a lot. So when he went for the weekend, he'd give me all these tickets, which are for like breakfast, lunch, evening meal. And he used to get orange juice, milk. He'd get a starter, he'd get a really nice meal, you know, like a spaghetti bolognese, lasagna. Then he could have a pudding, which would be like, in Britain, it's like rhubarb and custard, and apple pie and custard. And you used to always talk to the ladies there, you know. The women who worked there, the ladies who worked there, we used to have such a laugh with them, you know. And they used to say, all right. That's, that's how they talk in Coventry. They used to say, all right. <laughs> you know, you say, all right. You to take it off. It's like take off the Coventry accent with them. Like that. Just have a laugh. How are you? All right. You haven't scalded yourself today with those hot, Pans up here, or you don't set fire to the kitchen, you know. Come on, I don't know what we said in those days, you know. They just laughed, they go, just young lads, just young blokes, you know. No responsibilities, really, nothing. And then after that, we'd, after you've had your meal, you're kind of ready to go to the pub, you know. So we'd be down at the pub by six o'clock. We used to be in the pub at half past five, but what used to be opening time, half past five. And he's been there by six. And anybody who went in by six will get a telling off, you know. And we're on the beer, playing darts, and dominoes, like old men. But by about nine o'clock, we'd have some really serious darts matches going on. 
and we had a darts team as well. But then uh, we uh, we got a discord, you know, we're chasing women and look at them. So I think that'll do now. For the, I think that'll do now for this story. Only because it's taken 30 minutes and it's really my memoirs, the memoirs of Winston Churchill. The, the memoirs of uh, Benjamin Franklin or the memoirs of Abraham Lincoln. No, no, no. The memoirs of me at Polytechnic. That's why I'm laughing. It's because we used to have such a good time. It was great. And then what happens in life? You split up. You don't see your friends for years. Or you keep in touch. And then you don't see them for like. 20 or 30 years and they found me out of the blue so I owe them really you know because they, they cheer me up a lot once I get talking to them now we just kind of talk about things that are going on currently like in Denmark or here you know, in Bristol once we get going on about that polytechnic we have just been talking about when we used to play a game called Buzz right you have to count one, two, three, four, five, six buzz 8 9 10 11 12 13 buzz and you have to buzz on 7 14 21 28 denominations of seven and then if you got it wrong you got a penalty so you have to drink more beer and we used to have a chairman and the chairman was tony farrington which is tony in denmark and he used to make us do all these punishment make us go stand in a bucket or stand upside down or uh, sing a song in the bar, things like that. It's student days, you know, it's crazy. So that's about it. We used to go to Warwick University and drink all this cider and get really ill, you know, spewing up and that. Um, but you couldn't beat it. It was like fantastic. Start to your life, you know, when you're 18 years of age to 21. There's nothing can compare to that. What we did at that polytechnic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pass it round, man. Uh, it was brilliant. So, that's it. We'll give you a bit more of France 3, France 3. Remember how crazy it is that they've got that sound. I remember it. It might not be there at all for that reason. Just... It's kind of like putting a little seal into a five pound note. It's kind of like authentication of copyright. This noise, but it might not be for that. It might just be that they put it in. They like to put it in a lot of things, you know, a lot of productions. It only goes once, it's not three times. So that's it. I don't know what I'm going to call this video. I'll think about it later on. I'll put a title. Shit. Shit and custard. Nah, no, I think I'll put The Arrival of John John Ross. <laughs> Feel like that god or like that bloke. He's a character. Right. Adios, amigos.